once upon a time. There was an old couple in a small village. They had no children, but they had a beloved and devoted dog named Max. Max, sit down. Give paw. Good boy. Good boy. Here you go. Max loved them too. One day, while the old man was busy with his garden, he saw Max excitedly digging in the dirt. This made the old man very curious, so he started digging in the same spot with his shovel. The old man's wife heard Max's excited barking and came out to see what was going on. It didn't take long before the man's shovel hit something hard. I think you found something, honey. What the old man found was an old chest. Curiously, he opened the chest and saw that thousands of gold coins were shining brightly in it. Ah, this must be a dream. We're rich. I can't believe it. All thanks to this smart dog. Come here, Max. Well done, boy. However, the old couple did not realize that the young man, who was their next-door neighbor, saw everything that had happened. Hmm, a smart dog that finds a treasure. Let's see if you can find a chest full of gold for me, too. <laughs> At night, the envious neighbor sneaked in through the old couple's window. The old couple was in a deep sleep. The neighbor used dog treats to get Max to follow him. <laughs> gotcha. And he took Max out of his house in the middle of the night and kidnapped him. The next day, when the old couple woke up, they could not see Max at home. Max! Come here, boy. Oh, my baby, where are you? As the old couple went out into the garden to look for Max, the envious neighbor saw the agitated couple. Hi, neighbor. Is your dog missing? Yes, neighbor. We looked everywhere, but we can't find Max. Did you see him? Yes, yes. He was running towards the city in the morning after a cat. The old couple went to the city to look for their dog. But the envious neighbor had hidden the dog in his own house. And once the old couple was gone, he took the dog to his own garden. Holding tight to the chain so that the dog could not escape. Come on, clever dog. Dig until you find a treasure, otherwise you'll never see your owners again. Max started sniffing sadly. After a while, he stopped and started barking persistently. The neighbor thought the dog must have found something. So he started digging right away. And sure enough, he also found a huge treasure chest. <laughs> Here's a chest even bigger than my neighbor's. Good job, clever dog. The neighbor took the chain off and left the dog back in the old couple's garden. When the old couple returned home sadly, their dear dog Max barked to greet them. Max? Oh, here you are. We were so worried about you, Max. In the evening of the same day, the envious neighbor came to the old couple's house with great greed. I'm so glad you found your dog. I'm sure you must have been very tired looking for him. How about I take the dog for a walk today so you can rest? How thoughtful of you, neighbor. Max is a very affectionate and friendly friend. Of course you can go with him for a stroll. The envious neighbor called Max. Max took a few steps forward and started talking. This man is bad. 
I will never go anywhere with him. Seeing the dog talking like a human, the envious neighbor was stunned. W what How can your dog talk? The old couple did not hear Max's voice. <laughs> <laughs> but only heard his barking, so they thought the neighbor must have been teasing. <laughs> if by talking you mean barking, then yes, he spoke, but all dogs bark. Why are you surprised by this? He... but 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 he didn't bark. He spoke like a human, I swear to you. Hmm. Maybe it's you that needs some rest, my neighbor. Come by later when you've rested, and then you can walk Max. The envious neighbor returned home in a daze. As soon as he woke up the next day, he went to the old couple's house again. I came to apologize for yesterday. Uh, I'm, I'm better today. <laughs> Where is Max? Oh, I'm glad you're recovering, neighbor. Max, come on, boy. Max came running, and when he saw the neighbor who was cruel to him, he spoke again. That envious bad neighbor, what are you doing here again? The neighbor could not hide his surprise. He broke out in a cold sweat. What? No, he spoke again. Your dog is speaking just like a human again. However, the old couple heard Max just barking normally. Uh, my neighbor, you might want to see a doctor. Uh, you two are in on this. Witchcraft, wizardry, and your magic dog is making me look crazy. I know it. Max is just a regular dog. My husband and I are not wizards or witches. I know your magic dog found a chest full of gold in your garden. <laughs> but that was just luck, neighbor. <laughs> I know it wasn't just luck, and I'll prove it. And, and and I'll do it in front of the village elder. So the whole village will see that you're wizards and, and you'll be banished from here. <laughs> As the envious neighbor was leaving the house, the old couple thought he was crazy. After a while, the envious neighbor came back to the old couple's house with the village elder and a few people with him. Here are the wizards in our village, see? And this is the magic dog. Dear elder, I think our neighbor is not well. He's talking like he's out of his mind. Sir? This couple has lived in our village a very long time. They are good-hearted. If you have proof that they are wizards, show it. Otherwise, don't waste our time. The envious neighbor beckoned Max to provide evidence to the elder. Tell me something now, magic dog. Tell me something. Well, let me tell you. You are an envious, evil neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> See, here's proof for you. A dog that talks like a human. The elder and the villagers looked at each other in astonishment. What are you talking about, neighbor? I'm talking about the dog. He just spoke. He spoke like us. Didn't you hear him? No, I don't think so. Sounds like any other dog. He just barked. But how can that be? What about you guys? Didn't you hear him speak? Villagers also said that the dog just barked. He's a magic dog that finds treasure chests. You must believe me. Dogs smell good and can find many things in the soil, mister. Yes, it was just a coincidence that he found a treasure chest for us. We were digging in our garden. See over there. Oh no, it wasn't a coincidence. So the envious neighbor told everyone how he had kidnapped the dog, had him dig his own garden, and the dog also found a treasure chest for him. What? Did you kidnap Max? The envious neighbor opened the treasure chest that the dog had found in front of everyone and he saw that it was filled with sand instead of gold. Ah! How could this be? This is impossible! This is nothing but theft and slander. 
You are no longer our neighbor. Leave our village immediately. The envious neighbor bowed his head and left the village in shame. I know you are good people. Don't worry, our village will be a safer place now, especially for your dog, Max. Thank, Thank you, dear, you, dear elder. elder. After all that had happened, Max made everyone love him with joy and excitement. Uh, how sweet are you? <laughs> you good little dog, good you boy. little thing, good for you. From that day on, the old couple lived a peaceful life with their dear dog, Max. I love you, dear family. What? Did you say something, my wife? No, I thought you said something, too. <laughs> Once upon a time, on the shore of the deep blue sea, a fisherman and his wife were living in a tiny cottage. The fisherman used to go to the seaside every day and fish with his fishing rod. He was quite content to live like this, but his wife was not as happy as he was. Ugh, look at that disgusting cottage! Moldy and damp everywhere! I am tired of cleaning every day! The fisherman was very much in love with his wife, but no matter what he did, he could not make her happy. If he brings her fish, she wants crab. If he picks apples, she craves pears. One day, the fisherman went fishing as usual. He swung his fishing rod into the water and started to wait. After a few hours, the tip of his fishing rod finally trembled. Oh, a fish hit the hook, but out! This must be a stubborn big fish! The fisherman pulled, 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 and was surprised to finally see the flounder on the tip of his fishing rod. Because this fish was golden and shining brightly. You finally managed to catch me, didn't you, fisherman? Huh? Did you just talk to me? Or am I going crazy? You heard right, fisherman. But listen, I'm not like the other fishes. I'm actually a prince under a spell. I can't believe this! Free me, fisherman! Please don't kill me! Even... Make a wish, and I'll make it come true because you saved me! No, no, no need. I've never seen a talking fish before. Of course I will free you. Come on, go back to the seas! The fisherman returned home with great excitement. Why did you come back early? Didn't you catch fish? Couldn't you at least bring some fruit? No, darling. I caught a fish today, but... But? But that fish was talking. He told me he was actually a prince. What? And what happened then? Well, then he asked me to make a wish. But that moment I was shocked and I immediately let him back into the water. So you found a magic fish and left it back in the water without asking for anything? Ha! Huh, I cannot believe you! You saved his life! You could make a wish in return, like a house! Go catch that fish again and ask for a new home to make me happy! The fisherman could not refuse his wife's request and went back to the seaside. Flounder, flounder, fish, prince, I just want to make a wish. Come on, make true this wish. Tick, tock, tick, tock. The fish just came out of the water. What do you want, fisherman? Tell me. My wife is not happy at all. Tired of living in a cottage. She wants a nice house. So go home, fisherman. She has a new home now. The fisherman ran home and saw his wife standing in front of a perfect house. The inside of the house was full of brand new furniture and everywhere was immaculate. Oh, 
husband, we will no longer live in a cottage, but in a wonderful house, and everything is new and clean. Yes, my wife. Now we can live happily ever after in this house, right? <laughs> we can never know that, my darling. That night, the fisherman's wife could not sleep. As soon as the morning came, she made another request from her husband at the breakfast table. Husband, this house seems too small for us. I want a bigger house, even a palace. What? I want to be a queen, don't you understand? Go and tell that to the fish prince. The fisherman went to the seaside with thoughts in his head. Flounder, flounder, fish prince, I just want to make a wish. Come on, make true this wish. Tick tock, tick tock. My wife is not happy at all. Why, fisherman? She wants to have a palace. So go home, fisherman. Your wife now lives in a palace. When the fisherman returned, he saw that there was now a huge palace where his house was, and his wife was sitting on a huge throne in the palace hall. My darling, you really have become a queen! <laughs> yes! So, are you happy now? No, I actually want to be the empress, not the queen. What?! A fish can't make you an empress, do you understand? Let the fish prince decide that. Come on, move! Go ask the fish to make me the empress! The poor fisherman went to the seaside sadly to make his wife happy. Flounder, flounder, fish prince, I just wanna make a wish. Come on, make true this wish. Tick tock, tick tock. My wife is still not happy. Well, is that so? So what does she want this time? She... She wants to be an empress. So go home, fisherman. Your wife is now an empress. When the fisherman came running back, he could not believe his eyes. The palace was now much larger than before. Moreover, there were guards at the door. His wife, on the other hand, was now sitting on a more glorious throne as an empress. Oh, my darling! You really have become an empress! Yes! <laughs> so, are you happy now? Hmm, I don't know. We'll talk about it later. I'm so tired today. We better sleep now. The fisherman and his wife lay on the bed to sleep. The fisherman fell asleep, praying that his wife would not want anything more from him. However, his wife did not sleep again. She had been thinking all night about what more she could want from that magic fish. A week has passed. The woman called her husband before her and made a request. Husband, time keeps running out. I want to control time. I want to live above the clouds and rule the sun and the moon. What are you saying, wife? Why do you want such a thing? Why is this abundance, wealth and power not enough? If you want me to be happy, go to that fish prince now and tell him my wish. I can't do this, my darling. Please stop now. Oh, but don't you want me to be happy? The fisherman risked everything to make his wife happy and went to the seaside again. Flounder, flounder, fish prince, I just want to make a wish. Come on, make true this wish. Tick tock, tick tock. My wife is still not happy. I'm sorry about that, fisherman. What does she want this time? My wife wants to control time. She wants to rule the sun and the moon in a palace above the clouds. All right, fisherman, go home. 
Your wife now has what she wants. When the fisherman came running back, neither his wife nor the palace were there. When he looked up, he saw that the clouds were far away from him. Oh, my wife! Where are you? You are far from me now! The fisherman hurried back to the seashore and called the fish prince. Flounder, flounder, fish prince, I just want to make a wish. Come on, make true this wish. Tick tock, tick tock. What happened to my wife? I just fulfilled her wish. She gave up everything to rule time above the clouds. So neither you can see her, nor can she see you. Oh, fish prince, I saved your life, but I never asked you for a wish myself. I always wanted something for my wife. Please help me. Give me back my wife. Hmm, you're right, fisherman. Tell me, what is your wish? May my wife always be with me and very happy. This is my wish. Well, fisherman, go home. Your wife has everything to be happy. The fisherman ran home with great excitement. He was very surprised to see this new situation. His wife was waiting for him in front of the cottage, just like in the old days. Oh, my husband! I couldn't realize the worth of what I had. I was actually very happy with you in this small and cute cottage. Oh, my wife! I love you so much! From that day on, the fisherman's wife understood that even the smallest things can bring happiness. Thus, they lived happily ever after in a clean house with delicious food every day. One eye, two eyes, and three eyes. In a land far, far away, there was an old woman who lived with her three daughters. The eldest daughter was one-eyed. The middle daughter had three eyes, and the youngest daughter had two eyes. Their mother, the old woman, loved the oldest two the most. She would do whatever they wanted. Thank you so much, mother. The youngest daughter was always given the chores and housework, even while they told her she was useless and incompetent. And they didn't even invite her to their dinner table. Mom, Two Eyes doesn't deserve to eat at this table with us because she can't do anything right. But I'm... So... The mother did not let her two-eyed daughter eat with them at the table. She was given only the leftover food after everyone left the table. Nevertheless, she kept her heart kind and helpful. One day, her one-eyed and three-eyed older sisters came to the girl with two eyes. They insulted her and threw dirty laundries on her. You didn't wash these clothes well. Watch them again. <laughs> Two Eyes left the house crying. She went to the river to wash the laundry again. Why are my sisters treating me like this? What did I ever do to them? <laughs> While the two-eyed girl was weeping, a fairy appeared before her. The fairy dazzled the two-eyed girl with her shining outfit, but she kept her face hidden from her. Why are you crying, two-eyed beautiful girl? Because I'm the youngest in the house. My mother and sisters say I'm useless and they hate me and only give me scraps from the dinner table. Oh, don't be sad, pretty girl. Look, I 
have a present for you. This is a magic wand. If you make a wish and wave the magic wand three times, it will come true. When the two-eyed girl made a wish, a dinner table appeared. The table was filled with delicious food. Ah! Look at these dishes, all warm and fresh. Two Eyes had been hungry for days, so she started to eat from the food on the table. When you're done eating, you only need to wave the wand twice, beautiful Two-Eyed Girl. Remember, only twice. The fairy disappeared without showing her face. The Two-Eyed Girl, after having a good meal, waved the wand twice. And the table vanished. Oh, I'm finally full. I'm so happy. But I have to hide this wand from my sisters and my mother or they will destroy me for it. The two-eyed girl returned home using the wand as a walking stick. She noticed the leftover food on the table, but she didn't eat it because she was full. Two Eyes took her walking stick and went out again every day. She went to the water's edge, waved her wand, and ate as much as she wanted. But one day, when she returned home, her older sisters, One Eye and Three Eyes, noticed a change in their younger sister, Two Eyes. Why does Two Eyes smile every time she goes out and returns? And she doesn't eat the scraps we leave her. The next day, the jealous sisters followed her when Two Eyes went out. After a while, Two Eyes came to the water's edge. She made a wish and waved the wand three times. And a table full of delicious food appeared. Seeing this, the sisters were astonished. Ah, so she fills her stomach with delicious food every day. And she doesn't share it with us either. One Eye and Three Eyes ran home and told their mother what they saw. The mother could not believe what she heard, and she was very angry. Everyone hid before Two Eyes returned home. As soon as the girl entered the house, her mother came up to her and took the wand in her hand and broke it in half. No! Why did you do that? You were feasting on delicious food while we sat at home starving. No more food for you in this house. Two Eyes was so upset that she took the broken wand and went outside crying. At that moment, the mysterious good fairy appeared before her again. Don't cry, Two-Eyed Beautiful Girl. Take the pieces of the stick and bury them under the moonlight. You will smile again. The mysterious fairy disappeared before the two eyes could see her face. Two eyes went and did what the fairy said. The next day, a tree with silver leaves and golden fruit grew where she had buried the pieces of the stick. It was so majestic and bright that everyone could see it. Two Eyes' mother and sisters wanted to go to the tree and collect some fruit from it. But whenever the sisters reached out for the fruit, the tree branches were lifted up. Seeing this, Two Eyes came to them immediately. Maybe I can pick a fruit from this beautiful tree. Huh. We couldn't even get it. How will you succeed? Two Eyes stretched out her arms towards the tree. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. After the kind words, 
The tree bent its branches in front of the two eyes so that she could easily take the fruit. Two eyes wanted to give some of the fruit to her mother and sisters, but they were crazy with jealousy. Oh, well, I can do that. Watch! Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter. Give me some fruit and some joy, tree of glitter! But the tree did not respond to what one eye and three eyes had said. <coughs> How is it that this tree only obeys two eyes' orders? At that moment, a handsome knight approached, galloping on his horse. Get out of here, two eyes! Hide behind the bushes! Do not embarrass us with your selfishness! Poor Two Eyes obeyed and hid behind the bushes with the fruit in her arms. When the knight came near the silver-leaved and golden-fruited tree, he stared in amazement. Wow! If the owner of this magnificent tree would give me a silver branch, I would make her the happiest person in the world. We are the owners of this tree, sir. I can give you a silver branch. One Eye and Three Eyes jumped and jumped to pluck a branch from the tree, but in vain. They couldn't even touch a leaf. You said this tree belongs to you? Then why can't you pluck even a single fruit from it? Two Eyes wanted to come out and share her fruits with the knight, but she was afraid of her mother and sisters, so she stayed put and started to cry. <laughs> And then the mysterious fairy appeared again. Beautiful two-eyed girl, take the leaf of the tree and put it in your heart. Then face the night without any fear. The two-eyed girl did as the fairy told her, and her worn-out outfit turned into a bright, sparkling dress. She immediately came out of the bush where she was hiding and faced the night with the fruit in her arms. The knight was fascinated by the beauty of two eyes, and he couldn't take his eyes off her. I can give you a silver branch with golden fruit, sir. I want to make you the happiest woman in the world, beautiful-eyed girl. Will you marry me? Two eyes immediately accepted the knight's marriage proposal, and they embraced each other. Seeing this, the jealous sisters and mother apologized to Two Eyes. We thought you were incompetent because you were younger than us. But you are pure-minded and kind-hearted. Sorry, sister. Two Eyes forgave her sisters and mother. The silver tree is now yours. You can get as many fruit as you want from it. After these beautiful words of Two Eyes, the mysterious fairy appeared on the top of the silver leaf tree and showed her face for the first time. Two Eyes was very surprised to see that the fairy had three eyes and realized that people only need a good heart to do good, no matter how different they look. Then Two Eyes and the Knight got on a horse and rode off to eternal happiness. <laughs>